Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're taking an in-depth look at fall jerkbait fishing. The baits, the rods, the retrieves that we use to consistently catch jerkbait fish in the fall. I love jerkbait fishing. These baits are just so effective. They're one of a handful of baits that have the ability to trigger a feed response in a bass, and that is something special. That's what makes this category of baits so different and so important. Now, we've already done a jerkbait video this fall, uh, but it was nowhere near this in depth. I promised in that video that this one was coming, and today is the day. We are taking an in depth look at fall jerkbait fishing. The baits, rods, the appropriate gear for fishing them, uh, and then a lot on color theory as well as on bait movement. But I also want to show you the exact retrieves the ways that we fish these baits to trigger those feed responses because a jerk bait in the right hands is a deadly tool. But if someone doesn't understand how to use it effectively, it's just another lure. So actually to kick this thing off, I think what we'll do is let's switch gears completely and let's actually go spend a little time fishing the baits. I'll show you the retrieves. I'll show you how I throw them and how I work them. Then we'll jump back in and we'll take a look at the specifics of the baits themselves and how to use each one as an effective tool in your lineup. The key to success with a jerk bait is all in how you work the rod and the reel. Cadence is everything. You can be on a lake where there is a wide open jerk bait bite, and if you don't understand how to work that bait effectively, you will not get bit. Conversely, if you really understand how to do it, you can force a jerk bait bite in a lot of situations because it draws a reaction strike. I think the number one mistake that people make is they move the jerk bait slightly before they actually rip it. See, the cadence with the jerk bait is a combination of rips and pauses. So I'll throw this out here. What I want is either one, two, or three rips. Doesn't really matter how many. You can mix them up as you go. Sometimes I'll do like three, like one, two, three. Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, little guy. And he ate that thing. Hey, buddy, don't hook me. The little ones are always the ones that get you. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. So you can mix one, two, or three twitches at random. Uh, I like to do groups of three, you know, one, two, three, let it sit. One, two, three, let it sit. One, one, two, one, two, three. Just mix it up until you get a feel for when those fish are striking. If they always strike on the one, slow down your overall presentation. Now, slowing down or speeding up is also a big deal, as is how hard you twitch the bait. As a rule of thumb, a bait with a smaller bill, you can hit a lot harder, meaning you can twitch it a lot harder than a bait with a longer bill. The longer the bill, the more I just barely bump those baits because they grab more water and if you hit them too hard, it just sort of rolls them over. So you wanna be subtle with the bigger baits, but a small bait or a bait with a small bill, you can hit those pretty hard, especially if your water temperatures are still warm. Now, the biggest thing to understand, what I started to say before, is that I think the biggest mistake people make is they accidentally, oh, I've got a scale on my hook. They accidentally 
move the jerk bait where it swims a little before they actually rip it. And we do not want that. That's the number one thing you don't want to do. We want to rip, stop, rip, stop, rip, stop. The key to that is all in the reel. So when I throw this bait out there, if this was a top water, because the top water is the other bait uh, that will sort of walk. If it was a top water, you would reel up your slack and then jerk, reel, jerk, reel, jerk, reel. That's the cadence for a top water. This is not a top water. A jerk bait is the exact opposite. When we go to jerk a jerk bait, we want to go from dead slack to movement. Dead slack, movement. So if I have to reel up my slack, I always stop before I pull the line tight. I always leave some slack. Then when it's time to move the bait, you twitch the rod and twitch the reel in the same moment. So a top water is twitch, turn, twitch, turn, twitch, turn. A jerk bait is twitch, twitch, twitch. It's both hands together. That is the big difference in cadence that I think people miss. If you can learn how to do that, completely different of other baits that you walk, you will start catching fish. When you do it this way, there's no minor movement. There's no swim. There's no sudden pull of the bait. It goes from dead stop to harsh move. Dead stop, harsh move. And that is what triggers these reactions out of these fish. Let's throw it back up here. We'll actually fish a cast again. So three, let's do three again. Now we'll do two. Maybe one. Back to three. And again, I'm hitting this bait pretty hard, but my water temps are still relatively warm. Fish are aggressive. So I can be very aggressive with the bait. Now, even though this bait has a small bill, as the water temperatures cool down, I'm going to get much slower and I'm gonna leave much longer pauses and I'm gonna hit the bait more gently. So warm water, you're gonna see me working that bait. Boom, 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 boom. You know, very, very aggressive with how I work it. Sort of like this, very fast. Not a lot of pauses. Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, there's another one with him. Oh man, he ate it too. <laughs> but as the water temps cool, I'm gonna go to a much slower retrieve. Let me switch baits and I'll show you. Now that, that was a Shimano Zoom Verno 95 SP. This is a Vision 110 Junior Plus One, larger bill. And this is one of the baits that I really like to slow down with. So this one, we're gonna just go to a much slower cadence. I'm going to rip it just as hard, but nowhere near as often. Much longer pauses. Now, as time goes on, as we head towards winter, these pauses will get longer and longer and longer. I really like, in the wintertime, a pause somewhere between about three and five seconds. I'll go as long as a 10-second pause. There are plenty of people who go longer than that. I can't do it. I'm way too ADD for that. If it's more than a 10 second pause, I literally throw something else. It just drives me nuts to go that slow. But again, the key is letting that bait sit and hover longer. Now, baits that you want to let hover in the winter time obviously need to be more balanced more perfectly tuned. And that's why we're very, very careful with our hook replacements. I'll get more into that as we go. But hook replacement is everything because if you change a bait where it starts rising really quickly or starts sinking really quickly, you can't do those long pauses or 
that bait's going to sink or rise. Sinking is the worst because you'll throw it out there, work it, and then you're waiting, waiting, waiting. You go to move it again, you're snagged on the bottom. That is the worst. So balance with the jerk bait is everything. But again, as that water gets cooler, we will go to longer pauses. We'll give it a one, two, three, single twitch. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try a double twitch. One, two, three, four, five, single twitch. Much, much slower cadence. And that really will get those fish that are more lethargic in that colder water because you need to give those fish time to rise to the bait. The jerk bait is suspending above them. So when you twitch it, those fish are typically looking up at it. You twitch it and as it sits there, they'll rise to it. But if you go by them too quickly, they never have time to get there. Oh, one just blew up out here. They never have time to get there at all. Got him. <laughs> oh, too much fun. I love throwing jerk baits. Look at that. He got it. Oh, they're blowing up right next to me all of a sudden. This is awesome. These fish are chasing. They're aggressive. Thank you, my friend. See if we can't get one more and then we'll sit back down We'll start talking again about how these different baits work, what different baits are for. Again, I'm gonna be really aggressive right now because my water's still reasonably warm and all of a sudden those fish came up chasing some bait fish. So when they're, oh, there's one. When they're actively chasing, obviously I wanna be moving quickly to mimic that. But as we get later into fall, much slower, much more methodical giving those fish time to rise to that bait is everything. Got some junk on there. All right, guys, let's go back, sit down and really look at these different baits, where we fish them, why we fish them and what the different baits are for now that you've got a good understanding of how to actually get the retrieve and get the action oh, right there and get the action out of the base. I can't help myself. I grabbed the bait finesse setup. That's the little Mega Bass X80 Junior. We'll see if we can't finesse one more. Oh, we hit it right away. Oh, look, there's one chasing right there. Let's try and get that one. Working these tiny jerk baits is the same deal, except that I'm using much lighter tackle. This is the Mega Bass Pop X stick. That last fish, that was the 110 stick. And then those first couple fish, that was the Shimano X Pride. 610 medium. But for these tiny jerk baits, you've dropped all the way down to a pop X stick, a super light rod, and six pound fluorocarbon to not. There he is. It's a little guy, but we'll take him. Oh, he came off. There's a little spotted bass. All right. I'm thinking we make one more cast just because I'm having fun. And then we'll get into the thick of these jerk baits. Get my hooks unwrapped. How many times have you heard one more cast in your life? Might be more than one, we'll see.
There he is. It really was one more cast. <laughs> Little largemouth. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, too fun. Too fun. You can see even with the little finesse bait, the retrieve is the same. I'm working the rod and the reel at the exact same time. And that is what gives it that crisp darting action. And that is what those fish react to. We've watched so many times in underwater footage where a fish will be coming up. We'll pause that bait and the fish will be coming up and something will cause it cause the bait to sort of move a little bit. And the second it moves slowly, like a little swim, they're off it. They'll come up so hot and that thing shifts, they're gone. But if they come up hot and then it darts, boom, they blast that thing. Total feed response, total reaction to the movement. But it's got to be those harsh darting motions, none of that slow swim. All right, let's shift back over and let's really take a deep dive into these baits and how we fish different baits in different situations effectively. The hook upgrades we use, line that we use, line is critical because line will also cause those baits to swim if you don't pay attention. It's really hard. Actually, it's not, it's not hard, but it's important that you pay attention to the details so that your retrieves don't get messed up. But as long as you pay attention to the details, this is so simple. Anyone can do it. Anyone can catch jerkbait fish very, very easily. All right, let's go. Bass are aggressive in the fall. They're chasing bait fish. They're ambushing. Sometimes they're working as a team and they're schooling. Those fish require an aggressive bait to get their attention. And the baits themselves don't even have to be super, super dialed because you're fishing them pretty quickly. So they don't have to suspend perfectly. They don't have to have that exact action, although it does help. As we get into the cooler water, being more and more refined is everything. But kicking this thing off, this time of year, these fish are still chewing. And I've got a handful of baits uh, that we use effectively. The things we're looking for in a jerk bait early to mid fall are going to be a lot of flash, baits that can make super aggressive movements. Some jerk baits make little darty actions, right? Little movements. Some will just flash and roll. Those baits that really flash and move are important. And baits with a lot of sound can be important too. Effectively, what we're trying to do is draw the fish's attention away from the bait fish that they want to chase and get them to strike our bait instead. So that overbearing more sound, more flash, more movement. That's what gets those fish. I've got a handful of baits that I rely on this time of year. The first one is the Jackal Rerange 110. That's that guy there. And you might be able to see the flash that comes off the side of that bait as I roll it. The Rerange is one of those baits that rolls when you twitch it. So when I rip that thing, it doesn't just turn, it rolls to the side. And as it does that, it just throws light. That is a very, very effective bait when bass are actively chasing. The next one is the World Minnow. So this is from Shimano. This is the World Minnow. And then the smaller guy, the Zoom Verno. The deal here is I'm trying to match the size of the bait fish that they're chasing. So one a little bigger, one a little smaller. Both of these baits, if you look inside there, they have something called flash boost. Do you see it flashing in there? Even though I'm staying relatively still, as still as I can, they continue to shine and to shimmy. And that absolutely triggers a feed response in a bass. It's incredible how well that little strip in there flashing 
works at getting fish to commit to the bait. It creates secondary movement, which that's the difference between looking like a fish and being a fish, secondary movement. And this does a great job of imitating that. The Zumverno in particular, this is the Zumverno 95 SP. This is one of the dirtiest jerk baits that I own. What I mean is when I'm popping that thing like we just were, when I'm working that bait, it's not just doing these little darts. This thing is all over the place, huge movements. When I snap that rod tip, that bait just rips side to side. It's incredible how aggressive the motion is that comes out of that bait. So again, right now is prime time for this bait. This is when this bait shines. And then we'll see it really shine again in the springtime. From Mega Mass, I've got two. Um, both of these baits are baits that are going to go a little bit deeper. Uh, they, that's just where they shine for me. So when I'm throwing shallower, either that re-range or the world minnow, or if I need to get down, I'm sorry, if I need to downsize that Zoom Verno. But when I need to get deeper, I want a bigger bill. And there are two baits. That's that 110 Junior plus one again that we were just throwing. That bait just has the magic. I don't know what it is about that one. We, we refer to something called the it factor sometimes in fishing. Some baits have it. Whatever it is, it's that thing that just gets fish to lose their minds. Some baits have it, some baits don't. And the angler can't always look at them and tell what the difference is. But you know that when you open your box, that crankbait has it, and those don't, right? Same deal with jerk baits. That 110 Junior plus one has it. That bait just smashes. So size wise, very, very similar to that Zoom Verno. Super aggressive bait absolutely has it as well. And that bait is shallow. Look at the bill size on that Shimano versus the bill size on that Mega Bass. See the difference? So shallower, deeper. It's that simple. And then the last one, if I need to get even deeper and I need to be even more finessey, this is the X Nanahan line of jerk baits by Mega Bass. Notice it goes down to two hooks instead of three. It's a very, very darty bait. A lot of movement again, very sharp, aggressive moves. And this is the X Nanahan plus two. So this is a plus one, this is a plus two. Again, look at that bill size again, huge difference. So this is getting even deeper. But again, this is one of those baits that just has something special. One of my buddies tipped me off to this one and I put a little bit more time into it and I was shocked how well that little X Nanahan plus two really works. And then one more, this is just a, I have to give it a mention. They're not even, fully available yet. Uh, I believe you can still pre-order them. These launched at iCast, but Tim and I got a chance to fish with them. And this is the Rapala Maverick. And it is definitely not same old Rapala. Like they completely, they wanted a new jerkbait and they went a completely different route, completely different colors, amazing balancing, phenomenal action out of the bait. They did a really, really good job. So we've got a chance to play with that one quite a bit. But again, that one, I believe, I believe stock hits in November uh, and I'll be looking forward to spending a bunch more time with that one. But it has absolutely reached the point where it deserves a mention, even though they're not in stock yet. Very cool bait. So I can't exactly say that that was keeping it simple, right? That's a bunch of baits. But if you look at this as a system, rather than as a bunch of baits, it gets really, really easy. If my bait fish are larger, it's either a Jackal Rerange or that Shimano World Minnow. If my bait fish are smaller, it's one of those other three. You're either looking at the Zoom Verno, the shallowest, the 110 plus one junior, medium diver, or that X Nanahan plus two, deep diver. 
So if you know your fishery, if you know where those fish are, what they're doing, at most you need maybe two baits, right? You need a full size bait and then you need a smaller profile and you'll know if you need shallow, mid or deep. So a bunch of baits, but not really when we look at it as a system. Now we're going to get into colors and we'll talk about that soon. Uh, and that is super important. So make sure you stick around for colors and for hooks. Um, we might even interrupt at some point and talk hooks because it's so critical. And I wanna make sure you get that information because some people will bail out before the end of the video and they're gonna miss some stuff that's super important. And I want you guys to catch fish. I want this to work for you and it will, but you need to get all the facts. So let's jump into those core baits uh, for the cooler water. And then maybe we'll pause right there and we'll talk hooks. Then we'll get into the rest of this stuff. All right, as the water cools, that's where, like I said, it becomes much more critical for baits to suspend in the water column. Getting a bait to sit, now it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect is ideal, but getting a bait to sit perfect for, for the manufacturer, it's impossible. And the reason why is as water temperatures rise and fall, that changes the buoyancy of a bait. So they could set it perfectly in a factory for 65 degree water. And as water temperatures go up and down, that bait's either going to start sinking or start floating. So you need to understand that. They will never be perfect unless you balance them that day. But what I like to do, and we'll get to this with hooks, is no matter what I do to a bait, I try to maintain stock. I want the bait to be just like it came from the factory in terms of buoyancy. We'll get to that. Now, as far as the baits go, uh, the first two, again, Shimano, that World Minnow, and then this is their Deep Diver. That's the World Diver. Shallower, deeper. These are very very effective baits, even as we start heading into cool water. There is something about that flash boost inside those baits that just crushes fish. There's no way around it. It is effective, it works. I've seen too many fish charge up on that bait. Through the years I've seen it where they charge up on the bait right at the boat and you pause it and they just bail, right? They see the boat, they bail. And I've now had too many times where that fish charges up at the boat and they should bail. And instead they lock in and they stare at that bait and I just pause because I've run out of room. And right at that moment when they should bail, boom, they crush that thing. And it makes no sense, except that as they've run up on it, that flash boost is still going. So they're sitting there looking at a bait that's not moving, but it is moving. That secondary action is going and that's when they make that commitment. Now, as we get even colder, as we really get into the heart of winter, you're going to see me make a switch effectively 100% into the Mega Bass line of jerk baits. Those baits are just so deadly in that colder water. My confidence goes through the roof. Uh, I basically have four baits that I fish. It's going to be the Mega Bass Vision 110, which is the, the bread and butter, the staple for the entire jerkbait industry. If you wonder why so many brands make a 110, this is why. The Mega Bass 110 changed everything about jerkbait fishing, and it is still the absolute gold standard of a jerkbait that everything is compared to. The baits suspend extremely well. Uh, they can be fished aggressively, but they can also be fished slowly and methodically like we were talking about with long pauses. And I mean, there are people in the core of winter doing 20 and 30 second pauses. I just don't have it in me. Five to 10 seconds, I can do. I can count to 10 and then twitch once. I can count to 10 and twitch twice, right? I can play that game because it works. But what I can't do is go any longer than that. After that, I'm like, hey, we're gonna find some other way to catch these fish because I have to have some fun. That's why I'm out here. But that bait truly can play that game. It is remarkable. So that's the Mega Mass Vision 110. And then of course, we've got the 110 Junior. Just that smaller, 
downsized version. The other set of baits that you're going to see me throw, this is about as easy as it gets, that Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus One, the bigger bill. So there's the 110, there's that 110 plus one. And then no surprise here, it's going to be the 110 plus one junior. That is the core of what I'm going to throw when the water is cold. It's that simple. We've, we've talked a lot about these baits through the years. We've talked a lot about them this fall. They are deadly, deadly baits. You can get super aggressive. You can be super methodical. The one thing I'll say is that the plus ones, like I said earlier, you need to hit them a lot softer. Because if you take a bait with a big bill, especially like a plus two or that Shimano World Diver, if you hit a bait with a big bill really hard, it wrecks the action. So the 110, the standard, a small bill, you can, you can be subtle if they want subtle, but you can also snap that thing. I mean, you can really hit it to draw an aggressive bite. But as soon as you go to those deeper divers, focus on either like a medium twitch or subtle. Don't overwork those bigger build baits. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I personally see people make. Now, let's take a second to talk hooks because hooks, as we head towards the colder water, again, it's everything. You're going to have to upgrade your hooks on a jerk bait, period. Whether uh, it's a bait that comes with a hook, like a Vision 110 comes with a very light wire hook. You can fish that thing effectively on very, very light line, which is why I think they come with them. Because you could drop all the way down to like seven or eight pound line if you want to. That's not what I use. I typically use either 10 or 12 pound. We're gonna get to that. But you can drop down even lighter. However, if you hook a giant, you're in for a battle and they're probably gonna fold out some hook points because they are such fine wire hooks. They're very, very refined. Now, whether or not that's the issue or you're just catching a pile of jerkbait fish and you're wearing hooks out because that is going to happen. I typically don't lose a lot of jerkbaits, right? They're in the middle of the water column. So I'll catch a ton of fish on a single bait and I'll wear hooks out completely, destroy the set. I might break points off. I might just roll points over so they're dull. I might have bent them out too many times. I've bent them back and now I feel like they're, they're gonna cost me when I hook a giant. No matter what, you are going to upgrade hooks. So here's the deal. In the video description, along with the baits, the gear, everything, if you're not familiar with how these videos work, in the video description below this video, we take the time to link everything we talk about every single bait in the order that we talked about it. And I'm even going to include, as long as there's enough room, the exact colors for every single bait. And while we haven't gotten the color yet, little spoiler, I'm gonna give you my best subtle colors and my best aggressive colors for every single one, if as long as it will fit. We'll also give you the exact hook upgrades that we use by the bait. And the ones that are going to matter, it's my core baits. So um, from Shimano, you've got World Minnow, World Diver, and the Zoom Verno. Super important to me. That is in the core of what I fish. And then from Mega Bass, we've got the Vision 110, which includes the Vision 110 Plus 1 and Plus 2. And then we've got the Vision 110 Junior, which includes the Junior, the Junior Plus 1, and the Junior Plus 2. I will give you the hook upgrades for all of those. It's only three hooks. It sounds like a ton, but it's actually it's four hooks. Sounds like a ton, but it's really not. Uh, but those hook upgrades are everything. On the Mega Masses, I use that Gamakatsu G Finesse. It is such a deadly hook. And this is not random. I want you to understand that what we've done through the years to come up with the hooks that we use, I literally sit with a gram scale and I take the hardware off of every single bait, hooks, split rings, all of it, and you weigh those components on a gram scale. 
and then I search high and low. I buy every hook you can imagine and I weigh them all along with the components, meaning split rings, and find perfect matches. My goal is not to make a Vision 110 Junior Plus One balance perfectly in the water column at every water temperature. That can't be done. But what I've done is I found the exact hooks that will maintain the exact stock weight. That way you have one that's got perfect upgraded hooks and you've got one that's bone stock and they will fish identically. That's my goal. So again, with the Vision, it's that G finesse. Um, here's the big deal on the Shimano's I just figured out the perfect hooks for them. I actually figured out the stock hooks. I'm positive these are what these baits have on them. On the World Minnow and the World Diver, they've got that nano coating on them, that like Teflon, that slick coating. That is this hook right here, the Hayabusa TBL 930 in a size five. I'm positive that is that hook. So we can upgrade forever, no problem, and not alter that bait whatsoever. And then on the Zoom Verno, this is even cooler. On the Zoom Verno, I figured it out that those are this hook, again, that 930, but they come with a black hook, not the coated hook, in a size eight. But here's the deal, they make it in a coated hook. So I personally, on the ones I'm fishing, I upgrade every single one of them to the coated hooks. There's a less than a gram total of weight difference to go to the coated hooks. The deal with coated hooks is they're slicker, okay? They're slippery, and I mean, it's it's nasty how sharp coated hooks are. Those gamakatsus are also coated hooks. The important thing with a jerk bait, why this matters so much and why I'm stopping talking about baits to talk about it, is that a bass will strike a jerk bait so hard and so fast and they tend to slap at the baits. They tend to hit them in the head, they tend to hit them really hard, and they tend to bounce off them. Because they hit them so fast and so hard, we've watched hours and hours and hours of underwater footage of bass eating our jerk baits. What we've discovered is that a bass can smash a jerk bait and get off it literally faster than your brain can register the bite. What that means is that if the hook didn't grab them on its own when they bumped into it, you can't hook them. They're on and off that fast. The only reason that you hook those jerk bait fish, now some come up and crush it, right? They just, they eat it. You've got them. But those ones that come in and pop that bait, the only reason you even hooked them is because your hooks were sharp enough to catch the fish when they bumped it. After that, you just load up on them. It's already happened. Literally, we've watched hours of this stuff. It is mind blowing. So I want the sharpest, hooks that I can get. I want a coating if it's a possibility, just to make them that much more slippery and easier for it to slide and get that hook point to stick. That's what I'm after. And I'm so, so, I was so thrilled when I figured out hooks for the Vision 110 a few years ago. Like I lost my mind about it, I was so pumped. And I'm right there again with the hooks for the Shimano's because those Visions and the Shimano in that World Series and in the Zoom Verno, I mean, those are my core baits. Those are the ones that I fish more than anything else. And to have perfect upgrades for all of them, like you guys know, I'm psychotic about tackle. I like, I sleep better at night once I've solved that problem. Uh, it really matters to me because I don't want a giant to come up and slap my bait or your bait or your buddy's bait and not get hooked. It's hard enough to get one of those giants to eat. If they smack that thing and don't hook up, what a letdown. So anyway, that puts the odds as far in our favor as possible. That's everything we can do to hook those fish. Now with that, let's jump back into the baits and then we'll wrap it up with some color theory as well as rods, reels, and line. And line is also so important 
to how that bait's going to move in the water. Uh, let's talk bait finesse, and then we'll talk those bigger full-size baits. For bait finesse, total of four baits, super simple. The X80 Junior, which you just saw me throwing, that's a mega bass bait. This is in their brand new BFS line of baits. It's actually a BFS line. I have caught more fish on this bait this fall. It is a deadly, deadly bait. It fishes pretty shallow. The other one that does that, this is the Rosante. I think it's the 63, right? The bait's so small, the words are tiny. Yeah, the 63 SP. So it's an even smaller bait. So two sizes of bait there. Both of these are really, really effective shallow water bait. So if the bass are chasing and like I'm seeing them bust, I want one of those little short lips where that bait's going to stay high in the water column right up top and the fish can come up underneath it. Um, I'll also fish these very effectively when the bass are corralling into the shallows. They're collecting the shad and pushing them back into a cove. These will fish very effectively in that situation. But the benefit of a BFS jerkbait is I'm matching the size of the bait fish, right? This matches the size of shad in my lake much, much better than this does. Now, as I travel, as I hit different lakes, there are lakes where I see a bass chasing shad and the shad are this long or bigger. But on this lake, I've got a lot of juvenile shad in the fall, a lot of three quarter inch to two inch shad. And these baits are right there. That's why you're seeing us throw more and more of these downsized profiles. We spent the last few years trying to figure out downsized profiles specifically for fall fishing. We're really getting it dialed in now. Two more baits for you. So two shallow divers, two deep divers. This is from owner Cultiva. That's their little suspending jerk bait, their deep diver. And then this one from Duo Reales, see the size of that bill? That's that Rosante 57 MR, even smaller. It's a little 57, but I've crushed them on this bait. I, I can't tell you how many fish I've caught on this tiny thing. It's got awesome stock hardware. I upgrade nothing. Um, same with that X80 Junior, actually. I don't immediately upgrade on that either until I start bending out and destroying the hardware and I have to upgrade them. Uh, but I'm fishing these baits stock but we've got shallow divers, deep divers. And again, if they're corralling in a little deeper water or they're not busting on the top, but I know they're around and they're chasing shad, then I go to the deep diver so I can fish it a little bit lower in the water column. So just like the big brothers, I've got a couple shallow baits I have a lot of confidence in, a couple deep baits I have a lot of confidence in, and I leave it right there. I don't get overly complicated. And then last but not least, is those oversized baits. Two of them, uh, I throw the oversized baits the least, personally. I love full size baits and finesse baits, but when I start seeing bass chasing gizzard shad, for me, that's the trigger, because that's what we've got around here. When they start to chase gizzards, that's a bigger bait fish, and I have to match that size. That's when you'll see me go up to either the re-range 130 or the Mega Bass Vision Max LBO. It's just a bigger profile. Here it is compared to a standard 110. See, it's just a significantly larger bait, but it fishes effectively the same way. And same way with that re-range. The re-range has a ton of body roll, just like the smaller 110 size, but in that bigger 130 profile. Now let's talk, that's it for baits. Let's talk rods and reels um, and line, and then we'll end with my theory on color. And I've talked about that before, uh, but I wanna end on that because it is so important. And if you've missed that, it's the deal. Uh, as far as rods and reels go, if you've ever seen me talk about a jerk bait, fish a jerk bait, Anything related to a jerkbait, you already know what's in my hand. This is the baddest jerkbait combo, the best bang for the buck that I have ever found anywhere at any price. And we've been fishing it for years. This is the Shimano X-Pride 
610 medium. And I pair that to a Shimano Aldebaran. This is not a super budget friendly combo. It's not, uh, particularly the Aldebaran. The X-Pride, bang for the buck, is just mind blowing. It's so good. But that Aldebaran will just let you send those baits. It's so perfect, insanely light. And then I pair this up with 10 pound Sunline Super FC Sniper. Uh, I throw a lot of 10 or 12. I tend to lean to 10. I've actually lightened up the last few years, uh, but I go back and forth between 10 and 12, 10 and 12. But this is a six foot 10, so it's a short rod, medium, but it's a very specific action. What makes it so difficult to build a jerk bait rod because almost no one does it effectively. There are very few rods on the market that I consider effective jerk bait rods, very few. The rod has to be so crisp that when you are trying to snap that jerk bait, you get that darty action. But if that rod tries to load up when you pull it, right, really load through the blank, well, then you don't get crisp darts. What you get is starting to move, jerk, and then a little bit more swim as it unloads. And that action is terrible. It is so hard for a company to build a rod that can snap where the tip is crisp enough to pop a jerk bait. But then when you hook a fish, I mean, it's easy. Use a, use a flipping stick, right? But the part that's so hard to balance is that once you hook those fish, now you've got them on little tiny treble hooks. So the midsection of the rod has to load up deep enough to not bend those hooks out. And that balance between a rod that is crisp enough to effectively work the bait, but soft enough to absorb during the fight, almost impossible for anybody to build. Shimano did a remarkable job with this 610 medium. It is incredible, period. Now, for the guy who doesn't have the budget for that setup, I completely understand. You can actually, step everything down a little bit and still do just fine. This is in the Corrado line. This is also the 610 medium. So a less expensive rod. And I went down to the Corrado 70 MGL, exact same line. Actually, this is the 12 pound on this one. Action wise, identical. Fishing the baits effectively, identical. The difference between them, weight and sensitivity. This is like the ultimate of being crisp and light and effective. And it is just a joy to fish here. Super effective. I mean, I'm taking nothing away from this combo whatsoever. Uh, it's just a little bit more weight in the hand, which I mean, for the cost savings, if that's important to you, by all means, take the cost savings. Uh, but it's very, very effective. And actually you can get the 610 medium all the way down to the Shimano SLX. Uh, and that is still a very effective action in that rod. Now, for the guy that wants to go high end, that wants to be refined, that wants that exact action, I was so pumped when I found the perfect action in a Mega Bass rod as well. This is the 110 stick. Not, there's several jerkbait rods in the, in the Mega Bass lineup and the 110 stick is my personal favorite. It's a little bit shorter six foot five, so a little bit shorter. I like these shorter rods, six five, six ten, because I can snap that rod down and I'm not hitting the water. If you use a, wrong, a longer rod and you start beating the water, the fish hear that. You're not going to catch those fish that come in close to the boat. So that shorter rod makes it much easier to work that bait. And then that 110 stick, uh, same deal, I've paired it up to an Aldebaran. I mean, it is just so refined so light it's amazing and then same deal either 10 or 12 pound fluoro but this one is this stuff and you guys if you've been watching the videos you've been seeing me talk more and more about this line lately i i put the time into it with bait finesse fell in love with it and then expanded it out from there but a friend tipped me off to this this is the daiwa j fluoro samurai but it's the hidden it's that green tinted line 
I don't know what the deal is with this line, but I re-spool a lot less often. I'm saving a lot of money because I'm not wearing my line out and I don't have to re-spool it as often. Now, that is one thing that comes up regardless of these lines. These are the two lines that I have the most confidence in. Sunline Super SC Sniper and then Daiwa Samurai, that hidden fluoro. But regardless, if you let your line get old on the spool, this one, nope, that one's perfect. I think the line on this Corrado is the oldest. Let me look. Now nope, that one's good too. I may not have one that's messed up. What I'm looking for is as your fluoro stays on the spool, that one's good too. None of mine need to be replaced right now. This is something that people overlook. The longer your line has been on the spool, it'll start to get that curl to it. It gets memory. If you throw a jerk bait out there that's got a lot of memory in the line and you rip that bait and then you stop, it wants to coil back up. It's like a, a super fine spring. So when you pop it and it pulls that line straight, when you stop, it wants to recoil. You can be doing everything right and your jerk bait still gets pulled forward, which as we talked about before, ruins the action and the fish will 100% let it go. I first noticed it in underwater video. Imagine that. And there were two things that I noticed. One, baits that were sliding forward as a result of that coil in the line. And two, that line was shining. You think fluorocarbon is clear. It is not clear. Uh, it is as clear as we get, but it is not clear, especially when you've got that coil where it's turned every direction going around that loop. Part of that coil, if it's a sunny day in underwater footage, will just be shining. You can see it plain as day. So you need to do one of two things. You either need to re-spool right away. That's the best thing to do. So you're always fishing fresh line on a jerk bait. But the other thing you can do, and it totally works. If your line's not destroyed, it's just coiled. Before you go out on the boat, hook it to something. Hook it to a fence post, hook it to the tailgate of your truck, doesn't matter. Walk out a bunch of line and then just give it a little stretch. Not so hard that you're gonna break it, just give it a little stretch and it will effectively pull that line straight and it will pull the coil out of it. Now you're ready to go for the day. So pay more attention to your line with a jerk bait than you do with all your other baits because it really, really matters. It actually impacts the action of the bait. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with jerk baits before we wrap this up is color. And this is something that we've talked about in several other videos. So for some of you, you know exactly what this is about. For some of you, this will be a shocker. But when it comes to getting bit on a jerk bait, the really, really natural colors are the baits that I rely on. If I just need to know whether or not there is a jerk bait bite, Matt Shad from Mega Mass, if I'm throwing a Mega Mass, is hands down the one that I turn to. But from each company, you've got those really, really natural colors. If I need to know, that's what I throw. But the second I am on a jerk bait bite where I know, yes, they are eating, so ends the natural colors for me. What I have found is that playing with color with a jerk bait can take this thing to a whole different level that you didn't even know existed. My best days on a jerk bait are never on the natural colors. I get a lot of fish on the natural colors and they get bit most often. What I mean is if there's 30 days a year where I catch jerk bait fish. I'm just making this up as I go. You know, all 30 of those days, I can catch them on a matte shad. There might only be five or 10 days where I can catch them on something bold, like an elegy bone. Something like this, right? A bold color and bold does not mean chartreuse, although chartreuse tend to be my favorite. It can be white, 
It can be a mix of pearl and purple, or it can be that bright, bold chartreuse, even like a little chartreuse accent on a Tennessee shad can go a really, really long way with getting these fish to react. But those brighter, bolder colors, once I know they'll eat a jerk bait, this is why I have boxes of jerk baits. It's not because you need a ton of baits. It's because I wanna take it as far as it's willing to go, right? If those fish wanna start chewing, I wanna catch every last one of them. So I have boxes of colors. And this is why it's once I know they're going, I immediately take that natural one off. Okay, I've established they will eat a jerk bait. Now let's cycle through some of these colors that might get them to fire. Because whatever it is, on the days they're willing to eat a jerk bait, they will lose their minds on those bold colors. And it won't be all of them, you'll just find one. Yep, today is an elegy bone kind of a day and they are just chewing that thing. Like I'm catching them 10 to one over Matt Shad. But then you come back another day where they're not really eating a jerk bait, they won't touch elegy bone. But I can catch the occasional fish on a Matt Shad, right? Those days exist. That's why I always start with the natural colors just to see if I can catch them at all. But then I always, always, always check my bright bold colors. If I could only have one, it is Elegy Bone. It's that super bright chartreuse. Now, or in Shimano, it's this guy right here. Super bright chartreuse. You'll also see me throw a ton of clown. Such a deadly color. But they're just these brighter, bolder colors that will trigger a whole different reaction in these fish. Like, once they're fired up, once they know they're gonna eat that jerk bait and their friends are gonna eat that jerk bait, you go to that bright, bold one and it's like, who can get there first? You will catch them all, it's incredible. The best days you will ever have on a jerk bait are on the crazy colors. So don't be afraid to try them. Again, there's a lot of gear here. I'm not sure what all, we have a limited amount of space in that video description. So I'm gonna link them in order of the way we talked about them. Uh, rods and reels, of course. I didn't even include a spinning reel in this one. And we do have some spinning rods that will throw it effectively. So if it'll fit in the description, I'll get that in there too. If it won't, you can ask in the comments what rod and we'll go ahead and let you know. Uh, but I'll, if the space will allow, I'm gonna link you, like I said before, my favorite natural tones, as well as my favorite bold, bright, aggressive colors too, because it definitely pays to try both. Guys, fall is jerkbait time. This is prime time. You can catch a ton of fish, you can have a blast, you can also catch the biggest fish of your life. Because this is a bait that triggers a feed response, it doesn't require the fish to want to bite. Giant fish, those are smart predators, man. They have learned, they have been through it. They don't always eat things, even when they look good. But if you can trigger a feed response, all of that goes out the window and they just lash out. So a jerk bait is a very effective way to catch monster bass too. Get out there on the water this fall, throw those jerk baits, throw them effectively. Don't be afraid to take it all the way through the winter into spring. This is a fun way to catch them. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.